Hi, I'm Mark Riley, and welcome to the Limer Post Show. Today, I'm the pleasure of being joined by Adam Rees, the drummer for Raging Sons and Left on Red. Adam, how are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, basically, just to get down to it quickly, um, how's your year been with the pandemic and everything that's going on? How's it been? What are you up to? How's the music going and whatnot? Um, yeah, it's been mad. It has been mad. Um, I think without the music, it would have been like properly going off my game but um yeah. it's great like because we've had like we've i've had music the whole way through it do you know yeah. what i mean like Asian funds recorded an album through the pandemic so like i remember the start like the first lockdown and all the sport was over and you're just like sitting on a saturday going this it doesn't feel right there's no soccer there's no rugby oh, there was nothing to do like just pure yeah. despair basically yeah yeah so it's been nice kind of it's something to keep the mind occupied and you know, it's a reason to be chatting to people and that kind of stuff. So it was really good. And on the flip side of it as well, I think, because we've had that long to work on the music, I think we've kind of gotten the best out of it that we could. Absolutely. You know, we would have had, we would have released the Raging Sons album last summer. Mm. So we've had four months of recording, get it mixed, get it out there and then get gigging. And you'd have that kind of panic to get it out the door, I guess. Of course. Yeah. But at least now we've had, and we haven't had it, a choice but to have like three weeks to sit around one song and go oh we might change this we might do yeah. this so it's been really good um i think when you know we've definitely like overworked the whole thing <laughs> it's, same, but that's, yeah. that's what that's what the pandemic in any avenue that you're in in life and particularly with music because you're obviously particular and passionate about it so when it comes to basically dissecting your own music you're just overthinking and you've time to be overthinking about it. So you'll be chopping and changing stuff all the time. It's the same with anyone in the pandemic. All we've had is time. And like that just leaves you to overthinking with absolutely everything. Like, but uh, yeah. like, has it, has it frustrated you? Like, or has it, I suppose, has it helped you with the music? I think, I think what made it, what made the whole lockdown easy was kind of forcing myself to accept, okay, look, this is where we're at kind of thing. Yep. I think it's, it's important in any kind of situation to change or whatever to accept that, okay, this is now the way it is. I can only control what I can control. So it's been okay. Um, and we were like very lucky in terms of like health and family and health and all that. So it's been one of the better ones compared to what's going on out there. So super grateful for that. Um, That's the thing. Yeah, just positive side of it. Yeah. What actually yeah. really matters, like, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, like I went to see my grandparents, both sets of grandparents in recent weeks. They're like both fully vaccinated. They're gone through it. You can give them a hug, and it's Brilliant. like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, whatever's gone before, and like you can be annoyed at right. There's no gigs, or there's no can't go for a couple of pints, or any of that kind of jazz. What matters is still there. Like, absolutely. You know I mean, yeah. it really does. It makes you super appreciative and grateful for for what you do have, and and yes, and then obviously, it gave us a bundle of time to. I don't know, to work on the music stuff, to read a lot of books, to do things that you wouldn't yeah. have done, I guess, spend time with yourself, spend time with family as much as you can. So it's added positives. Yeah, just picking up new new hobbies. Like that's that's the thing. It actually, it's it's basically how you utilize it. So it can either be the worst year of your life. And it was tough. Granted, it was tough for everyone. But if you just stay positive and start picking up new things, new things to do, looking into, I suppose, I don't know, just new interests it's you, you can find an avenue where it's actually beneficial to you so i suppose it's better off so what i suppose quickly to get onto it um like raging suns i believe is it august, august. You, you've planned yeah for the album and is there a title for the album or what's what's the story so far yes album's going to be called 2020 um and there are a couple of different reasons for that yeah, um, yeah. tell me one or two if you can couple of reasons that nobody's told me yet um <laughs> here, here. Was, yeah no it, it was Finton uh the lead singer he kind of yep he was like all right this is the one because like we've had as well as that like we've had the time to record the music right and that's grand but we've also had all the time to go what's the name of the album should we change the name of the band what about this what's the name of this song and like so you're sitting there talking at length to people on zoom calls drinking cans gone yeah <laughs> useless name like, you yeah. know, we should never also embarrass like people afraid to bring forward a name like yeah uh, and so we've done like this is the first interview we've had where we've actually had a name because every other time we've been like yeah yeah no, there's a name coming we, we just don't know yet um, <laughs> so yeah it'll be called 2020 i've no idea why it is that way but 
I'm sure Fintan in, in other interviews will explain that one. Not so bad. Uh, yeah, basically, I suppose um, I, was, I was looking at them earlier. I was just thinking about your song. So you've had, uh, is it three singles you've had? Yeah. Tonight, uh, what is it? It's Someone Else's Love. What's the other one? It's Someone Else's Love Tonight and Breathe Easy. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So actually, what I wanted to ask you is what are your favorites? Why are they your favorites? And I suppose what was the, uh, I suppose the inspiration for them and, and the process in making those songs? Um, so yeah, so it, like they've all been totally different, like the three stories behind them and I guess how they came to be, um, they all came around in different ways. Like tonight was born out of us breaking up as a band. We kind of decided, look, we'll pack it in, we'll let that be that. And some time passed and I think I met Finton out for a couple of pints and I look, let's just go and have a jam. It's like, forget about the whole music thing and trying to do something with let's it. Let's just go. And enjoy it. Exactly. Go as four lads into a room, make some music. So then building up to that, Finton sent us on this track, just like an acoustic um, voice note on WhatsApp. And so I got into rehearsal, started working on that and we kind of went, oh, there's something, something new here, something different here. Yeah. So we went and recorded that and we wanted to push the sound. We wanted to push the sound in a certain direction. And I don't think we knew fully what it was until we got into the studio with tonight. And then we all kind of driving home after that weekend, we're going to go and write, this is, this is really good. And then on the back of that, Finton wrote another track. Um, and I think within a couple of weeks, we were back in the studio recording that, that was breathe easy. And then the flip side of that is, the other, like the other way we, stuff came about was someone else's love had been around for years and years and years and um, and that was one of the tracks there so like the album has got a mix of stuff songs that have been really old that we're now recording songs that have been really old and we're now changing them and um, some new tracks there's like there's a, a, a really good mix of stuff on it as well like in some way it tells a story of your experience as a band yeah for sure yeah. and it is exactly. There is so much of that, like, and each, and especially to each of us individually, as like as much as we share with each other, kind of what the whole process has been like. I think for all of us individually, we all have some kind of an emotional yep. gratitude or hook into both the music and also the process of doing this during lockdown and all that. So, yeah, it has been. It's been a tremendously enjoyable experience, and it's something deeply personal, something that I'm really happy that we've been able to do. You know. And are you, like, how would I say this? Are you really good friends outside of jamming? Are you close friends? And is it not just simply making music and business? Are you close, Nick, group? or No, the boys are, like, um, and it's the same for all of us. We're, they're the first people I call. Brothers, no. Um, yeah. and, it, and it just is that way. And it's not, it's not that way because of music. Um, we've just kind of grown into that relationship. Um, with each other like Finton and Damo are cousins like so that handy uh, for them there you uh, go yeah myself and Colin are two outsiders but yeah it is it's family like so we were like we were shooting another video the other day um for the fourth single that's coming out with the album and we were shooting it down with out the back of Finton's sister's house and it's just like it's like calling over at your own end so yeah, but I mean you crazy like um, that's so much better as well because I say the production is way better because it's just relaxed you know it's, yeah you're you're with the lads and you you know when it's like you, you basically bouncing ideas off one another isn't like you're not gonna be afraid to do it do you know no, you're, no, no. you're gonna no, be no, no. free to no, no. give your opinion your like your peace of mind on what you think you should chop or change or what you should leave so i just think yeah i think the the music will show to be honest it'll show no, that man. and we have like and likewise we were able to turn around to each other and go that's not it do you know what i mean that part isn't or that lyric isn't or whatever yeah um which is really good because, like, you see an awful lot of bands, like, tr fucking throughout history, like, how many bands are split up because of musical differences or that kind of stuff. And it's not to jinx it. I think we have a really nice vibe there. Um, but I always have had, like, with whoever, whatever groups I've played, we've always had that kind of cohesion. I'd hate to, like, I'd hate to be a pro level guy who's brought in because he's a pro level guy. Yeah. And it's, you're on now on the business end of things. And, I don't know, you lose some of that passion and that, I guess. 100%, but that's that's why, that's like, you're basically, you love making music, but you love making music with this certain group of people. Mm. So that's, it's part of, it's part of the journey and part of making the music. It's not just simply 
right? I have to go make a song. It's lads, come on, we get together, Joe, a few yeah. cans, whatever it is that gets Joe flowing. And that's just so much more enjoyable. And it'll probably show in your music that you have that passion. Um, so yeah, I suppose actually, how did you meet? What, like, wh- how, how long? How long have you been together? And why did you so split the, up? So the, boys are together, the boys are together longer than I'm with them. Um, we went on a, kind of a mini tour together them as Raging Sons with other members and then I was in a band called My Empire so we did kind of a a tour around Ireland and I'm not sure how it came to be but they Colin rang me after the tour finished and they had a Today FM session to do and they were like oh look will you stand in for the Today FM session I was like yeah yeah of course Um, and there was like two or three more gigs that I filled in for and then they were like there was talk of doing an album Mm. Um. So I was like, yeah, cool, I'm in. Um, because the music was great. And it was great to it was great to see a band live and get familiar with a band's music before I joined them. Almost a lot of people wouldn't have that chance or that experience, I guess. Um, and I really liked their stuff. So like for me, I was only 18, 19. I was like, oh yeah, amazing. Yeah. Of course, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that was really cool. I think why we broke up is almost what's made us so appreciative of this now is that. Like we'd have, like we'd chat and be like, right, we'll jam so next Saturday. And we wouldn't talk to each other again for three weeks. Like, no one would take the initiative for doing something. And we all had other things going on. And like, May, our demos up and down to Mayo, Colm lives in Galway. Um, I was working like mad, Fint was working like mad. So we all had these excuses. And I think the reason we even decided to break up was because I think it was hurting all of us that we weren't doing anything. Yep. Even though we knew we wanted to. Yeah, and so the fact that it's come around now to having like we're so close to having like a vinyl in our hands, going, "This is what we did. This is like this is to show that the last couple of years were were worth it." That's what makes it kind of crazy, man. Um, like yeah, you should be honest to God, Adam. You should be so proud, man. Because um, like I mean, not that many people notice, but we were in school together, and I remember you playing drums at the at the early age of 17, 18. And I remember like, yeah, okay, people play drums and they can enjoy it and it's a hobby. But for you to be going on, to be doing what you're doing is a credit to your skill and obviously your work ethic. So yeah, it's just, I'm happy. I'm delighted for you, man, to be honest. And I hope uh, hope everything goes well. And in August, I'll be tuning in.